as seen in the previous episode, somewhere between here and my Dorsch connector back there, the top one, I don't have 12 volts anymore. Um, everything I can see, you know, it's not pinched. It's hard for you guys to see under there, but it doesn't look like I caught it under the in upper intake when I put it on. So unfortunately, I have to pull the upper. Um, while I pull the upper, I'm going to move the dual sink wire from this side to this side, I do believe. Um, I don't know if I'll ever have to pull it out, but I want to be able to pull it out without pulling the upper. Um, so I'm going to embark on that. Just cut the upper off. This is the one on the red one. I can't really see it. The red wire. I don't have any, I don't have 12 volts on. Um, it's nothing got pinched. Sorry, bad camera work. Um, nothing got pinched. Should be this one right here, yeah. Still kind of tucked nice and neat. Uh, I'm gonna pull that one out and see if maybe I didn't quite crimp the pin and the Deutsch connector good enough. Um, which it's just really weird. It when I was setting the dual sink up. And all that, I had to cycle the key a couple times and the fuel pump primed, I mean, three times probably, and then on the first start attempt, it didn't. Um, but yeah, we'll see if I mess the pin crimp up or something else I'm missing, um, but I'm going to pull it apart and see what's up. So here's the wire I bragged about, Lumen, and... You know, getting it to look good, it has got no power, no continuity from this red wire right to here. And all it does is go in here, turn and stop there. Not sure why. Um, you know, I kind of inspected the loom a little bit and I don't see any pinches or any chafes. All I did was cut the end off of the holly, you know, the wire that is part of the terminator harness. I didn't like cut it, splice it or anything other than, where is it at, for that Deutsch connector. But the problem is between here and here. So I kind of expected to see something when I pulled it all the way out, but I don't, so. Not the most elegant way to show resistance on a wire. I'm just trying to do this one-handed. Um, 2.5 million ohms. And a wire... I don't know. Not long. It's got to be a problem there. Kind of disappointing. Um, but I'm going to eliminate the connectors from it. And see if it's just a problem with the wire or... One of the ends. Um, the connector looks it's kind of hard to see it. Um, the connector looks okay. You try to turn the light off. Yeah, it's not like I didn't puncture the heat shrink. And then the Deutsch connector is nice. So, not sure. But I'll eliminate them and re ohm the wire without the connectors. Alright, well, I own from here to the connector, and it was, you know, pretty much open circuit. Um, I owned from this side to this side and it was fine. Um, from this all the way around to here and it was fine. Um, so the problem was this connector. So basically I cut, I cut the sheathing off because I wanted to see why it failed. Uh, and what I did, because I, I don't want to do that again. 
Um, and this just fell apart. So I, I, I have no idea, you know, if it was overcrimped or if it's just glued in there, this piece. Or if I just crimped, you know, over crimped it. Sorry, it's having trouble focusing. Um, I'm not sure. I've never taken one of these apart. But there it is. Um, you know, I, I could have you know, cut that wire open and check that in the car. But, um, honestly, it looked okay under the heat shrink. But it obviously wasn't. Um, so, not a wiring problem. Well, you know, a wire problem is a connecting problem, or connector problem. Uh, good news is I can use the other portion I cut off pretty much the same length. Reloom it in and not use this connector again. Um, yeah, kind of, that's disappointing, but it's time to move on. Here's the dual sync wire. I have it undone. Um, I had to lift the distributor a little bit due to the way I routed it before, so I went ahead and put the engine back at 50 degrees before top dead center. Made sure everything was good that way. Basically, gonna restart the dual sync or resync it, you know, left and right, make the lights come on like in the end of the last video. Um, so I have it unhooked right now, but it is much, much happier. This harness going this way, I tucked it under this one. I will be able to get that out from under it if I do need to pull the distributor for some reason without pulling the intake um, but then it just routes above right here and kind of in between the gap um, you can kind of see it right here uh, it does go under this one but this is loose on this side so I'll be able, I did see I can pull it out and get that out from under it but it helps hold it down um, so it's not under the fuel rail so you know worst case scenario I need to pull the dual sink I should be able to get it out uh, I wanted to go ahead and do that since the upper intake was off. Uh, I didn't anticipate having to pull the distributor back out. Um, but I did, so I'm basically starting from square one with that. So unfortunately I'm at a stopping point. It's a little too late to keep going. Um, and even if I did get the upper back on, which admittedly isn't that much work, it's it's too late to fire it up. Um, don't want to wake any kids up. <laughs> um, but that's it for tonight. Um, found that bad eyelet. Um, and that's cost me a few hours, but uh, could have been worse. So I'm just glad I found it. Uh, relatively easy. I kind of knew where to go when the fuel pump relay, or the fuel pump stopped priming. So, anyway, we're back to getting close to starting it up. So hopefully that'll be next time.